Hi, welcome to Tina Cooks. Today we're going to go polo pazza, chicken crazy. We're going to have a roasted chicken and a rotisserie chicken. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to start with the oven roasted chicken. I love oven roasted chicken. Now in this bowl, I have two chickens. I de-winged them because I used it for chicken stock. Um, this is salt water, ice cold salt water. I always soak my chickens in a nice icy salt water. I think it does something for the skin. We're going to pat him dry because I don't want any of that salty water in, on my chicken. Usually, I'll do two or three chickens at once because I like to have chick leftover chicken. I'm going to give him a little oil bath here. Yep. Now some people they lift up the breast skin and they, they stuff herbs and spices and all kinds of stuff under the skin and that's great. I don't like the extra calories or the butter and the, all that other stuff. So I just keep my chicken nice and plain and simple. Now on the roasted chicken I'm going to use just regular parsley, salt, pepper and granulated garlic. Now I do put a lot of seasoning on my chicken. And the reason why I do that is because it's going to add to the flavor of the gravy. Because when this is about a half an hour or so before it's, do before it's done, I'm going to throw some nice water in here right over the bird, kind of baste it a little bit so that the juices go through into the pan drippings. Because I, I like to have gravies with my food. My parsley, this is just going to be a parsley one, okay? Yeah, there's a lot of seasoning, but you need it. And we're going to pop him in the oven. Okay. Now this oven is about 350 degrees, okay? Now I will roast that chicken for about two, two and a half hours because I like my chicken cooked. Okay, so now the next chicken we're going to do, I'm going to put it in a rotisserie. You can use any rotisserie you like. take him out of the water. There we go. And we're going to pat him off too. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with this chicken, only I'm going to roast him with thyme. Okay? That's a spice. <laughs> you can use rosemaries also, a nice fresh rosemary. Stick it right inside the cavity of the chicken if you're roasting it in the oven. You could do it with, in, the, in the rotisserie too but I sprinkle it right on top because you can use it in the um, gravy. Okay. Now this is a little bit different because I'm going to sprinkle them all over the place because he's going to be turning around in the rotisserie. So we want to make sure he's covered. Okay. Now we'll do this with the, well the pepper is going to be a little trickier, but we'll get it. Oh my goodness, I got a mess going here. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes. There we go. See, with a little bit of ingenuity, you can figure it out. Okay. Of course, I'm going to have to wash this jar off him. <laughs> it's chicken to death. Talk about salmonella. <laughs> okay, now this is the time. You can use fresh, you can use dry. I'm the type of person I use what's in the house. Don't be afraid to season it because as this rotisseries, the, the grease, the fat comes out of the chicken and it just puts everything in the bottom of the pan. Okay, we're going to take our top off and I'm going to spare them this way, I think. Let me see, how am I going to do this? Oh, you know what, I probably might have to tie his legs up. Um, let's take a few seconds for me to find some twine, I'll be right back. Alrighty, I found some twine, so we're going to have to tie these little legs up because they, they hit the rotisserie burners and um, they smell terrible, like the chicken's burning and it's not good. Okay, so we're going to come around here like this and we're going to tie these little legs up. Okay, now we tied up his little legs. We don't want him um, hitting the burner. It'll cause grease. We're going to set him right on here like this. Here we go. 
Let them sit there for a minute. I'm going to put the cover on. And then we're going to shimmy them toward the middle. Bring them over to the rotisserie. I am going to set the rotisserie on two and a half hours because I like my chicken cooked. Okay? And there we go. We'll see you in two and a half hours. While our chickens are roasting, I'm going to cut to a potato and artichoke side dish I had done earlier. You're going to love it. It goes great with the chicken. Now I'm going to show you a wonderful side dish, artichokes and potatoes. I got ice cold water here. We're going to squeeze some lemon in there. It'll help the artichokes from discoloring. Now, a lot of people throw the stumps away. I do not. I usually have a piece of newspaper handy because these artichokes, they are dirty. They have thistles inside and you got to get the choke out. So I'm going to take a few minutes and concentrate on cleaning these because if they're cleaned properly, you can eat the whole thing. You don't have that. Sometimes you go into a restaurant and they got this big huge thing, you got to clean off all the leaves. I don't want to be bothered with that. I just want to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now when I buy an artichoke, I tend to buy them flat. These are a little bit off season, so they're a little bit pointy and a little, we're gonna lose quite a bit of this artichoke. But in, the, in season, they're very, very tight and they're flat. I don't buy the real pointy ones. My Nana always told me that they were tough. They weren't as good as the, the flatted ones. I don't know how you pick your artichoke, but that's how I pick mine. Now I'm just gonna pull back these leaves until, because the bottom of these are okay. If it snaps off, you can eat it. You can feel if it's soft or not. All right. Now I'm going to come over here. I don't want these in my sink. They'll raise havoc with my garbage disposal. I'm literally going to cut these tops off because they're just not going to be any good. All right, and I have a spoon right here. Yes, I'm going to take it out. Now this is the choke, the purple in, ouch, see that right there? They, they stab you. They're very, very um, tough. And they got little, little tiny needles on the top that are very, very sharp. And this is the thistle. This is the choke. You, you can't eat that. It's, you just can't eat it. It'll, it'll choke you. <laughs> okay. Now you can see that this is already discoloring a little bit, and they will. It's an, I think it's impossible to have an artichoke that doesn't discolor a little bit. This is how you want it, nice and clean in the center, okay? And there you go, and you just Dip it in that lemon water and just make sure that, you know, take a little bit of lemon, rub it around, it won't hurt it. Because it'll it will it will brown and it'll it'll look kinda not nice. They also have points in here, so be careful when you're cleaning them, because those points, they will stick in your fingers and they, sometimes they take a while to work their way out. That's a good piece. I just kind of dug in a little too much there. Just put it in the lemon water. Because what I'm going to do is I'm not going to stuff these. I'm going to cut them up and I'm going to put them in with the potatoes. 
almost, it's going to be a delicious side dish. Serve with salad or roast pork or, or turkey or beef. They're a great side dish. Okay. And this is why I use the newspaper because this is a thistly mess. <laughs> nice and neat, no mess. Okay, I'm gonna take a two minute break and we'll be right back. I'm gonna start this out by infusing some oil, as you can see, which I put the oil and garlic on the heat, take it off, I've been doing that for a few minutes. It's starting to get a little soft. I'm gonna throw in some onions at this point. Okay. Alrighty. I'm not gonna bump this up too high right away because I want it to soften up a little bit. Now, usually I just cook with straight olive oil, but today I'm gonna to put a tablespoon of butter in here. When you add the butter, it gives the olive oil a better burn point, and it, it, it'll season the potatoes a little better so that they're not so um, plain. I like a little butter with my potatoes. It's about a tablespoon of butter, two tablespoons of oil, one big clove of garlic, about a quarter of a cup of minced onions. It was just one little ring, all right? Now I'm gonna start out with the potatoes. Uh, what I did was I peeled them and I um, sliced them fairly thick, you know. I just put them in water so that they don't brown salt water, so that they don't get all brown, rusty looking. All right, now we're gonna season this with some salt. And we're gonna use some parsley. And we're gonna use some, this is a mix. It's a red, it's a, it's a peppercorn medley. It's red, green, black, and some granulated garlic. Okay, now you can smell the butter in there, the buttery flavor and stuff like that. It's, it's gonna be great. We're gonna just toss this a little bit, incorporate the uh, spices. Oh yeah. Now, at this point, I'm gonna take the artichokes and I'm gonna slice them like so. Okay, and I'm gonna toss them in there. Okay, they, they do get a little bit brown, but that's okay. This is the heart of the artichoke, right in here. This is the heart. That's usually what most people clean them down to. I like the leaves, so to speak, too. They, they're very good. Okay. A lot of times I use the potatoes and the artichokes like this in what I call a frittata. It's, um, you add eggs to it. Oh, it's delicious. You make like a giant omelet and you, you make sandwiches. Oh, my, non, uh, my nonna was the queen of frittata. Okay. And now I'm gonna get my spoon and I'm gonna mix this through because now these just have to cook. You're gonna keep them covered. The potatoes will brown better covered. In a nice low simmer, these will cook really, really nice. Okay, we're gonna cover this up. Now I think these are gonna take about 20 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back from time to time, toss them around, and when we're done, I'll tell you how long they took. We'll be back. Okay, this chicken is rotisserieing nicely. It's got about a half an hour though, still to go. But we are gonna add the water to our other chicken because we wanna have some gravy, okay? As you can see, this one's not as nice and golden brown, but it'll get there. You rinse off there. Remember I said we get all that spices on there. That's about all I'm gonna add for water. That'll be plenty of gravy. Now we're going to let this simmer in the bottom there and it'll make a nice, nice dark juice that we can thicken and make gravy with. And we'll be back in about a half an hour. Okay, while we're waiting for our chicken, not only am I renovating my kitchen, I'm experimenting with making my own tiles. 
This is a ceramic mold of four four by four inch tiles. Now this has got to be a little bit of a Hercules to do, but it's fun, so watch out, Carl, because if it snaps, you're a goner. Pull this tight right on there. This is so much fun. It's like playing mud pies. Oh man, this elastic's twisted. Wait, give me a minute. Just because I'm on TV now, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm, I'm an amateur at this. This is new experimental type stuff. Okay. Then we got to put a top one on. Same thing. Watch out, Kyle. Imagine if this band... <laughs> I have flung a few bands. <laughs> oh, thank God I was in the room alone. So we shake. This is called slip. I buy it in the gallons. Okay, now, this is what we do. Now, I don't think I have enough slip to pour all four, so I'm going to pour three. I think I have enough for that because I've already poured quite a few. Here we go. Now, the funny thing about these tiles, maybe I'll only try to pour two, is they're going to sink in and settle, and you got to make sure they stay full to the top, otherwise they're hollow. And they don't they crack you can't have a tile that's going to crack because then you can't you can't cement it in yeah i think i'm just going to go with two because i'm almost out of my slip i'm going to have to go buy some more okay now this is the process you fill i shake them a little bit let it get down in there now these are tiles that i have poured these are the ones that are drying, and these are dried, okay? You can see the texture in this is a little different than that. Now these are totally dried and cleaned right here. They're getting ready for the kiln. You gotta clean the edges and straighten them out. And these are the tiles that have been fired or put into the kiln. They're ready for the design. Now, I don't know how it's gonna come out, but hopefully, I'm gonna have olives. I like green olives a little better, but we're gonna experiment. If you see beautiful olives <laughs> on the back tile splash of my stove, I was successful. If you see co solid colors, <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna let this settle. I'm gonna fill these to the top, and then we're gonna get back to our chicken. Okay, it's been about 30, 35 minutes, and the way you check this is you take your a little pointy knife or a fork, you'll see the artichokes are nice and tender, the potatoes are all nice and golden brown. Um, there's quite a few potatoes in here, so every single potato didn't get golden brown. A lot of times if you want everything to be nice and crispy, you can put it in the oven, but I'm a, I'm a stovetop cooker when it comes to this. Okay, we're just gonna slide these right into this plate here, like so. All right. Now these are wonderful with a roast chicken. Like I said, there's a lot of things you can put these potatoes with. This is a wonderful, wonderful side dish. One of my favorite things is a frittata, but that's another show. Artichokes and potatoes. We're going to take our chickens out and you'll see how the roasted chicken looks and how the rotisserie chicken looks. First we're going to grab the rotisserie chicken. I have my, my gloves on so I don't burn myself. Okay, we're going to put them in there. Oh yeah, see how nice and crispy it is? This is a cooked chicken. Love it like that. I'm going to take the gloves off and now you need the pot holders on. Okay, so now you take the pot, the chicken out of the oven, which is great. Okay, and see our juice is going to be good for a gravy. We've already done gravy before, so we're not going to do gravy again. I am going to rinse this off a little bit just to get some of the spices off. Okay, now this chicken has been off and it's been resting, but this chicken has not. So I am going to let this chicken rest 
but I'll show you the rotisserie chicken. And there we go. Yeah, you can see the difference already. I, I love rotisserie, but I love roasted too. I'm gonna chop off his little leg here and cut it through that twine. We don't want to eat the twine. That's not gonna be good. If I can get through it. Wait. That's why it's always good to have scissors handy. There we go. We've got him. Okay, see how it falls right off the bone? That's how you want it. That's how I like it. Nice and cooked. And your, your breast meat's going to be nice and tender. Okay. There we go. Oh, is that going to be good? All right. I'm going to finish carving, and then we'll go to the table. We'll be right back. Okay, it's Sunday night. I've roasted one chicken. I rotisseried another chicken. And this is who I feed. Thank you for watching Tina Cooks. Have a good night. He thinks I'm Spanish. Tell me when, Carl. Hi, welcome to Tina Cooks. Today we're gonna do chicken. No, that's not what I wanna say. Give me another minute. Okay, ready? Welcome to Tina Cooks. Today we're going polo pizza. We're gonna have a roasted chicken and we're gonna have a... I forgot. <laughs>